welcome to this update video. I hope you're doing really good. We're going to be looking at these three disturbances. So we have potential tropical cyclone 6 in the Gulf of Mexico, which is likely to become a tropical storm very, very soon and eventually a hurricane. Some models even show this potentially making it to major hurricane status before it would eventually move inland. And then there is Invest 92L. So that is the designation given to a disturbance in the main development region, which uh, has a high chance of formation over the course of the next seven days and then not too far behind it is another disturbance with a medium chance a 60 percent chance of formation so we're going to be talking about all of these we'll be looking at the caribbean it's a wet morning for many persons in the lesser antilles and we'll go on in more detail with the disturbances so switching to the satellite imagery here we can see things getting pretty active out there we can see potential tropical cyclone six in the gulf lots of convection associated with it now it is producing tropical storm force winds however it does not uh it, it hasn't fully reached the threshold to be considered a tropical storm but tropical storm conditions are definitely taking place within the vicinity of the system and then as i mentioned for the lesser Ryan Lees, we can see that there is a bit of action around as well and a tropical wave isn't too far from the area and then behind that we have the two disturbances uh, being watched so let's zoom into the caribbean here we can see all of these showers and thunderstorms around so likely some heavy rain as well across some areas you can let me know what's been going on for you so there is some increased rainfall in the area and with all the heavy rainfall that may take place well that's taking place right now there could be some instances of flooding also a bit of activity in parts of puerto rico and the virgin islands earlier same thing for hispaniola especially along the north coast of the dominican republic and also near san andreas and providencia there's some shower and thunderstorm activity with that little blob right there earlier for the cayman islands as well we can see a bit of activity popping up but dissipating aside from the area and also central america in a few spots nothing much is going on should be a pretty sunny morning for the rest of the region and going on to the rain we can see here that the map gets pretty colorful lots of showers and thunderstorms will be uh, continuing in parts of the lesser antilles today so anguilla all the way down through trinidad and tobago for some places there will be more heavy rainfall similar story for parts of the virgin islands puerto rico likely get active later today abc al is not expected to experience much bit of action across parts of colombia venezuela and the northern part of guyana Central America will likely be active as per usual, but as we head to the vicinity of Jamaica, going to the Cayman Islands, uh, th there may be some showers and thunderstorms later today, especially in the afternoon, but nothing too crazy. We may see a bit more activity for parts of Cuba, as well as Hispaniola, and even up to parts of the uh, Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands as well. Then headed to the Gulf, where we have potential tropical cyclone 6, the highest rainfall amounts will be offshore for right now. So rainfall amounts probably exceeding 8 or even 10 inches in total as we head through today. But the system is very close to land, so parts of east Eastern Mexico, the easternmost part, and especially northeastern Mexico and the southernmost tip of Texas will likely experience some heavy rain from the disturbance. And now we're going to look at it in a bit more detail. So here we have the National Hurricane Center's cone forecast. And the system is currently producing winds of 50 miles per hour. And it is making its way to the north-northwest at 5 miles per hour. So it is slowly moving. And we can also see that there is a tropical storm watch in effect for the southernmost tip of Texas and northeast Mexico. So as I mentioned, uh, some of those rain, some of that rainfall is spreading inland right now. And the system is going to be close enough, especially as we head into tomorrow, to actually unleash a tropical storm conditions so that's definitely possible eventually we'll see a hurricane watch maybe some tropical storm warnings being issued for sections other sections of the gulf coast particularly for louisiana maybe even other parts of texas as well but a hurricane landfall is definitely anticipated as we're going to be heading into the mid to latter part of the week and the trend is for louisiana let's look at the model track guidance here for the system and we can see that the tracks are pretty tight for the most part when we see them being a bit consistent on the eventual track it is likely that that will be the eventual track we'll see of the systems so if you're in louisiana now is the time to be 
preparing you know if you live in a place that floods very easily uh, it is best to get to somewhere that will be a lot safer because if we're talking about a hurricane landfall and especially with all that rain uh, the water is the main issue when it comes down to these systems so please take all the necessary precautions please listen to your local officials as well in regards to any updates and as we head to the intensity guidance, for now we can see that as we see tropical storm highlighted in green, cat one in yellow, cat two in orange, we have a couple. What uh, we have most of the models expecting that this will become a cat one hurricane, and a few expecting cat two. But some of the hurricane models are actually showing that this may even make it to major hurricane status, which wouldn't be too surprising. I mean, the Gulf is very warm right now, so let's see if this system is going to have any surprises over the course of the next few days as for invest 92l so it has a high 70 percent chance of formation and as it pertains to the model data for it let's go on to that we can see the track guidance here most of these take this on a general west to west northwestward track so if it moves more to the west it will likely be a problem for sections of the caribbean and then if it stays offshore, then the rest of it is going to stay offshore, not going to be a huge issue. So we definitely want to watch this as well over the course of the coming days to see what eventually happens with it. And then as for the intensity guidance, we can see here that uh, most models eventually has this becoming a tropical storm. Maybe as we head into the next uh, three to five days within that window, we could see it acquire tropical storm status. So we'll definitely have to wait and see what's going to go on with it. But in terms of environmental conditions with the dry air, let's move on to that. Here we can see it. So the yellow, the orange, and even the red shadings indicate the dry air. And the more vibrant the color is, the higher the concentration of dry air. Now, dry air is a huge enemy to tropical systems. Tropical cyclones hate them. So when we're talking about an environment where there's not a whole lot of dry air, lots of moisture is present, that is what they love. So there's that tropical wave, uh, not a whole lot of dry air in the vicinity of it. We have our disturbance 92L, and then that's the next one out there. So a bit of dry air is in the vicinity of it. It's kind of helping to keep things suppressed right now. But once the system makes its way a bit further to the west, where uh, conditions become a little bit more favorable, then we could see it try to develop into a tropical depression and maybe even a tropical storm. And the disturbance behind it has a better chance of actually staying offshore and not posing the threat to the Caribbean. But that is not 100% guaranteed, but it definitely looks as though it is a high possibility at this point. So that is what is going on for right now, guys. We've got a couple of systems out there. It's getting pretty active in the tropics. And the next two names on the list are Francine and Gordon. So it looks as though potential tropical cyclone 6 is going to become Francine. And if 92L gets itself together, becomes a tropical depression and eventually a, na uh, a tropical storm, then it will acquire the name Gordon. So that's it as i said guys i'll be keeping you posted because of course we're talking about the life threatening situation here especially in the gulf of mexico because once there's something active there someone is gonna get hit so stay tuned and i do hope that you found this update to be informative however if you have questions feel free to leave them in the comments i will respond to you when i have the chance to do so and remember to always be otherwise